1989, there was an earthquake that almost destroyed Armenia. That, that was our mail, if you saw that. So, <laughs> uh, In uh, 1989, there was a terrible earthquake that almost destroyed Armenia. In four minutes, 30,000 people died. I did not remember that. Of course, that's 1989. So, anyway, a father rushed to his son's school and he found that it was flattened. As he stood there in tears, he remembered that he had promised his son that no matter what happened, he would always be there for him. It looked hopeless. But the father got as close to, to where he thought his son's classroom was, and he started digging. He started moving rocks and cement, I suppose. Other parents were there, and they told him, it's too late. They're all dead. But he didn't give up. He just kept moving stones. After digging for 38 hours, he pulled on a stone and he heard his son's voice. He yelled his son's name and a voice called out, Dad? It's me, Dad. The boy remembered what his dad had told him and he said, I told the others that if you were not dead, if you were okay, that, that you would come and rescue all of us. Fourteen children were saved that day by that father, a faithful father. But we have the most faithful father there is, Father God. He is faithful to us every day, even when we are not faithful to him. So whether we're trapped by a, a, a fallen building or we're crushed by the hardships and the struggles of life, we're never cut off from our Father God's faithfulness. In the midst of this coronavirus, many people are asking, where is God? And, and that's a legitimate question. It, it seems to always come up when there's a disaster, you know, um, I'm sure there's people in Louisiana today saying, well, where is God in all this? You know, all this flooding we've had, the winds and the damage. There are even some pastors who may be asking that question. Where is God? As they have faced the problems that caused by the, the coronavirus this year. In fact, there are some researchers who are suggesting that uh, about 20% of the churches in the United States of America will not reopen. That because of the virus and many of them uh, have not gotten back together and uh, they don't know that some of them will survive. So if any of us are asking, where is God? Then folks, we have the answer. We have answers, actually, and they're right here in God's Word. And one answer to where is God is found in Matthew 1.23. You remember that Joseph, the stepfather, stepfather of Jesus, before he was born, found out that his fiance was pregnant with a child. And it uh, wasn't his child. Of course, we came to know this child of God. But he had a dream, and in that dream, an angel appeared to him and told him that Mary's son would be named Emmanuel, which is God with us, yes. And then we can look back in the Old Testament in Jeremiah chapter 23, and God said this, I am a God who is everywhere, and not in one place only. Do you not know that I am everywhere in heaven and on earth? 
That means that no matter where we are or what's going on in our lives, God is with us. He is with us. His presence changes everything. So I want us to look this morning at just a few ways, uh, some ways that, that God is with us. And the first way is that when we are lonely, God is our companion. Now there are more people in the world now than it ever has been. And we've never been more connected to each other. And I'm talking about communication devices, okay? But we've also never been more isolated and lonely. Now, all of us may feel loneliness from time to time. But during this pandemic, many, many people are lonely because they're having to be shut in. You know, uh, to life was aunt is in the hospital. Nobody can, none of the family can go visit her. Now, she's got nurses and doctors around her. Uh, Mr. Houston is isolated at uh, Wilmore at the veterans' home. And, you know, I'm sure there are people who come and minister to him and help him with, the, you know, food and everything that he needs. But still, he's not getting to see family. And, of course, he's only gotten to see them and talk to them over the phone when they go to visit. So it's a tough time for many, many people. And God doesn't want us to feel alone. He doesn't want that. But what can we do when we experience loneliness and we can't do anything about it? Well, we can welcome God and we can accept His presence because He is our companion. In the Old Testament, in Deuteronomy 31, verse 6, and also in Hebrews 13, 5, in the New Testament, God's Word tells us, He will not leave you or forsake you. Amen. Yes. And Jesus Himself said in Matthew 28, 20, I am with you always. Jesus has put His Spirit in our lives, and so He is with us always. And for Christians, He is our constant companion. Always there. Always. The second way is that when we are worried, God is our confidence. Isaiah 43, God said, when you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. Now, that last part of that verse, that happened to three guys in Daniel chapter 3. Yeah. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. They were thrown in the furnace because they would not worship the king. Three men thrown in a furnace. Very, very hot. Nothing fake about that furnace. But there were four images seen in that furnace. And we know who that other one was, don't we? It was God because He was with them. He was with them and, and the fire had no effect on them. I believe the Bible says that they didn't even smell like they'd been in a fire. God was with them. For many of us and many in this world, walking through 2020 has been very difficult. Some of us may even have wondered if this church would survive. Some of us may have wondered, will I survive? And folks, we've got 81 days left in this year. I don't know what's going to happen. But 
we can be certain that God will give us the confidence to make it through no matter what we face. The third way that God is with us is uh, when we are tempted. God provides a way out. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to humanity. God is faithful, and He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation, He will provide a way of escape so that you are able to bear it. When God is with us, He provides a way to overcome any temptation that we experience. And God knows where we struggle. The the devil knows our weaknesses, and that's where he attacks us. But God also knows where we're struggling and where we're weak, and he will give us an escape route. He sees, God sees our temptations coming way before we do. And he knows that our willpower is not strong enough to keep us from giving in. But God's presence will help us to fight that temptation. God provides a way out when we're tempted. The fourth way that God is with us is that when we are discouraged, he is our encourager and our comforter. Psalm 34, 18. The Lord is near to those who are discouraged. He saves those who have lost all hope. And I know that there has to be many, many people this year that has lost hope. Sarah was talking about her mother's friends military uh, people, been in the military, committed suicide. They had lost all hope. And it, it happens. It happens. Too many times it happens that people lose hope. But when we're discouraged, we can be confident that God will comfort us. He feels our hurts our discouragement, and he knows when we're struggling and when we're frustrated. Now this year did not surprise God. And our church's response to the pandemic did not surprise God. And I think we have faced it fairly well. There are, I'm sure there are some things we could have done better. But God has been with us and He brought us back together. And I praise Him for that. No matter what we're going through, God is walking through it with us. David became king, but before he was king, he was shepherd boy, and I'm sure he spent some lonely times himself. But he wrote this in Psalm 23, 4. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. We must understand that God isn't this some distant force. He didn't create this world and then go off and leave it. Now, there are some people who think that's, that's what he did. But I don't know how they could, could not see that he is present because of what he's created and how he has helped people. He is sympathetic to the stress that we feel. And his presence will change everything about the emotional pain that we experience. Our God is an encourager, 
And he is a comforter. He is our companion. He is our confidence. And his presence helps us to fight temptation. But for God to do all that in our lives, we must allow him to have a relationship with us. And the key to that relationship is found, I'm sure, in several verses in the Bible, but this particular one in Psalm 116, where the psalmist wrote, I will walk in the presence, in the Lord's presence, as I live here on earth. That is important for us, folks. God wants us to be in His presence. All the time. Are we walking in the Lord's presence? Do we have a close personal relationship with Him? Well, let me tell you about someone who did. Back when King George VI was King of England, he made visits to Canada uh, every so often. And so he was coming this one particular time, and a local official thought he might like to meet an Indian chief. The Indian chief's name that was chosen was uh, Chief Whitefeather. And this was an honor for him. And And he was asked to sing for the king. Now, everyone was expecting a native war song. But Chief Whitefeather was a Christian, and he had something else in mind. The government officials were greatly surprised when the chief began to sing the first verse of I'd Rather Have Jesus. I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather be His than have the riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus than houses or land. I'd rather be led by His nail pierced hand than to be the king of a vast domain or be held in sin's dead sway I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords to Yes, amen. Yeah. The Canadian officials were stunned. And they waited to see what King George was going to do. And King George walked over to the chief white feather took him by the hand and he said, I'd rather have Jesus too. (laughs) This time I ask you to bow your heads, close your eyes. That song, that song uh, talks about having riches Uh, It talks about owning land, about being famous. Is that what we're looking for? Or wouldn't you rather have Jesus? Wouldn't you rather be faithful to His cause, 
in His holy name and follow His leadership? Folks, the world, the world cannot give us the satisfaction that we long for. That can only be found in Jesus Christ. So if you're here today and you've never given your life to Jesus, I urge you to do that. I urge you to surrender all to Him today. Right now. 